It's a while since I've bought a real cheapo LED floodlight off eBay, so I bought one from a UK seller, and uh, this one came in, including shipping in the UK, and this is just ridiculously low, it's £4.99, and it came from a seller, oh, memorable, Magic Understroke Queen 2018. Yeah, nice name. Came through quickly, and uh, the first thing I did when uh, it arrived was I did the usual earth continuity check, but we'll be checking the earth bar. I mean, I got this to open up and just see what's happening with these lights. Is, is anything changing inside? It's it's showing your ground. That doesn't always mean it's well connected inside, but it's a good start. So uh, let's plug it in. Uh, incidentally, the instructions with it are quite uh, interesting because it says things like um, Furu XLD floodlight, semiconductor light fitting, blah blah blah. It can be used in mining operations. Mining operations, really? I thought they had to be explosion proof in most mining operations. Uh, I'm sure Ave will know the answer to that. Uh, I think it'd be a bit awkward if you had an explosion in a mine and it turned out that you'd fitted it out with five pound uh, lights off eBay. Yeah, that would that would have implications. They also suggest it can be used for large area building outlines, stadiums, flyovers, monuments, parks, and flower beds, etc. Pretty much everywhere you wouldn't actually use it. Oddly, uh, in the instructions here, it shows the brown as negative, the blue wire as positive. Uh, and the ground wire seems to have the letter N attached to it in here, this particular image. And it says, If something abnormal, not bright, flashing, very dark happens, ask a professional to check the wiring or call our customer service. What I think really they mean there is, if something abnormal, not bright, flashing, very dark happens, you've had your fivers worth. So let's uh, plug this in and see what sort of power it takes. Bear in mind, this is supposed to be a 10 watt warm white. So I'm going to plug it into the... Uh, quick test. I've mentioned it's a quick test because inevitably some will ask and they'll say, what was that really interesting thing you connected to? The quick test. You can. Uh, I, I made a video about it. If you do a search on my, in my videos for quick test, you'll find it. So that's a brown earth and uh, neutral. So let's uh, close this down. Quite a nice shade of white. I've just handled the thing. That's, I've not received an electric shock. That's quite good. Power consumption, about... Seven and a half watts, seven watts, it's not bad for, you know, what you normally get out of these 10 watt fixtures. Okay. Righty ho. So let's put that out of the way. And let's get it open and see what it's like inside. I'll just shove those things that have just avalanched onto my bench out of the way. I said in the last video that this was the wrong type of garment because it's quite noisy to be wearing when I'm making videos, but to be honest, it's so comfy. Let's take the back off first. It's so comfy. It's uh, really heading into winter now here. Well, the Christmas lights just went on in Ramsey today in the man. So, um, yeah, it's starting to get cooler and I prefer a cool house. I like breathing cool, cold air. So I use dehumidifiers to keep the house dry and uh, I just tend to dress warmly in the house if I feel cold. But since I work outdoors most of the time, uh, I don't tend to feel cold that much. It's just your metabolism just adapts and most of my life has been spent working outdoors, so I prefer a cooler environment. Hot, humid houses are horrible. And since I'm the only person that lives here, it doesn't really matter. So here we've got a typical little LED driver inside. The earth wire is actually connected. Oh, oh. The earth wire is sloppily connected. That could have done with being tightened. Quite a lot, actually. Uh, well, it is tight now. Just out of interest. Oh, is this this is kind of glued in? It is glued in. It's sort of silicony goop. Is it going to come out? Is it going to come out? I don't know if it's going to come out. Uh, I wanted to see if I could have fitted. Yes, I think you could fit 18650s in the back of that if you wanted. So this is other potential. This little silicon cover, not so keen on that. This is a, a shaped, it's not a die cast thing. This is just a, a punched metal steel sort of housing. I think it's steel. Hold on. Where's the magnet? It's steel. What about the steel back plate? Steel front. About the, I'm sure that that bit's not going to be steel. No, I don't think that's steel. No, yeah, that's that looks like it's a cast alloy. 
Right, so we've got the mains come in, it's the earth going here, the live and neutral going straight in there, as is often the case, because that's what determines the length of these flex and these things. Um, looking, oh, it's goop. That's what it uh, is. Quite often you get a short, really short flex in these, but having said that, this one is longer than average, which means you would actually be able to get it into a little junction box. So let's whip the front off. No great surprises in the back, it's just a generic little LED driver. So off comes the front. I do like these cases. These cases have so much potential. Still a bit of a bugbear that the uh, glass in the front has the black printing on it, uh, but it's kind of, it seems to be heat uh, baked on, so it's very hard to remove. Uh, it seems to be physically fused onto the glass, which is a shame because it would open up lots of potential for actually putting things like little solar panels uh, in these and actually using it as a sort of waterproof outdoor uh, solar module. Yeah, that's that. It's, it's kind of almost like it's screen printed and baked onto the glass. It's really solid. Because you could imagine that, you know, uh, well, a solar panel on that would be quite nice. It'd make it completely waterproof. So, usual arrangement reflector. They've got two screws in the reflector. It's not unusual to find just one diagonally opposing, well, two screws diagonally opposing each other inside. And then a generic. 10 watt LED. So, just out of interest, again, how much, oh, you know what, these uh, supports there would actually get in the way of that. Otherwise, you know, there would be potential to, uh, to have put, that's going to really fill the reflector up. Eh, it was worth trying. Right, let's test the LED. So, on goes the power supply. Uh, I'm guessing this is going to be 12 voltage LED. It's going to be this sort of like, th um, is it going to be the high voltage LED? Oh, it's the it's the high voltage LED. It's the one with all the chips in the series because this says 24 to 46 volts output at 300 milliamps. Uh, so I'm going to have to really bump the voltage up to uh, test this LED. Then let's start off fairly low. So I'm going to uh, put a lead on here. And here. Try not to short them out, and I'm going to turn the voltage up until the chips start to glow. Eighteen volts, twenty volts. Ah, oh, they're all coming on together. Eh, uh, no leaky chips. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. That's all, that's a good start. It doesn't mean absolutely that it's a super great LED. It's also notable that they've got the, um, they've actually held the LED down, down with four screws. So yeah, it's pretty much a generic little LED light. It's not bad for the money, but you know, it all depends ultimately on the quality of the LED and the power supply, but it's still worth buying these just as a project case because the cases are fantastic. They're just neat little cases. They've got lots of potential. So yeah, for a fiver, shipped, uh, it's not bad. I mean, obviously I wouldn't want to use it in a commercial application where there's going to be comeback if I, if I installed it high up in a building somewhere and then it, it conked out. But um, just for a sort of, as I say, the case and a general play thing, it's, it's pretty good. So yeah, not bad at all.